Good morning everyone. So today we're going to have a look at what you need to know when you're looking to buy your first buy to let mortgage. Now these are things that I wish somebody had told me when I first started looking at buying my first buy to let which was about six years ago now I believe. Now there's certain things that you want to make sure before you even start looking that you get into order. So this is administration tasks that are the last thing on your mind but are really important and in one of my applications it actually ended taking an additional six months because the bank messed up because they didn't have that information there and when I actually went into the bank which I'll discuss a little bit later I didn't have that documentation there to go which delayed the process even further. But then they start using things like electronic servicing etc in some cases and if they don't receive the right documentation you have to do it all again and it can just create such a mess so here are my tips on what you need to get sorted out and a little bit of what's going to happen and what you can expect so i probably don't need to explain this to a lot of you but in case you're somebody who's literally just started looking at what buy to let is i'm going to go through that now quickly for you so a buy to let mortgage is designed to help individuals buy a property where you intend to rent that out to somebody else rather than live in it and a lot of times for tax purposes this is a second home um, and the amount that you can borrow usually depends on the rental income that you expect to earn from tenants, although they might consider other income in some circumstances. So typically you'll need a higher deposit amount for a buy to let mortgage than you do a normal mortgage. So my first is whatever price you're having a look at right now. So say if you're finding this, so say if I was looking for a two bedroom terrace house for £100,000, what I would do is I would make sure that I had the deposit for around 35% of that because that's about the average amount of a deposit that you require are on a buy to let so you want to have that cash available ready to go before you even start the process and whether that be through actual savings or through a bank loan of some kind however you've got that money together that's fine but make sure you've got 35% put aside next so once you've made the decision you're definitely going to go down the buy to let route what you need to do is have a look at which buy to let mortgage is right for you so like I've said before there are a lot of different types of buy to let mortgage and with a buy to let mortgage the lender so that the bank or whoever Whatever it might be, whatever company it is, whatever institution etc is that's going to lend you that money. Many lenders specify that the rental income needs to be 25% to 45% higher than the mortgage payment. So this again differs to a normal mortgage. So you need to find out what the rent is for a property of that type. And you can do this when you actually go around and look at the property. You can ask the estate agent what the typical rent is for a property of this type in this area. Or go onto their website and have a look at similar properties and see what they're renting for. So you need to take whatever that value is and times it by 0.75 in your calculator to get the maximum amount of mortgage payment that you would make on that property if it was a 25% uh, mortgage otherwise if it's 45% then take that value that you've got and times it by 0.55 and that's the maximum that you can pay towards that mortgage in order to be eligible so your mortgage value can't exceed more than 25 to 45% of the income that you're going to receive on this. So you have to do your research and in some cases you might fall in love with a property but if you don't hit that criteria you are never going to be approved for a buy to let in the first instance. Next what you need to consider is that if you're going to make a purchase so you're going to buy um, a property then you're going to have legal costs associated with that so you need to get yourself a solicitor. You may even face fees through the mortgage such as a product fee. If you're serious about the property then I would always recommend that you go and get a quantity surveyor out to go and check the property out and give you a report because on these reports they actually tell you what the property is worth they give you a list of any faults that you might have and they also give you a projected income so that's a very good way to check out if a property is going to be viable and also it can avoid costs down the line so if you've already got your solicitor involved and then you find out that the house isn't the right one or you're not going to hit the eligibility for whatever reason then you've already had those costs so if you can get this done first you're going to avoid um, any unnecessary costs. Now in terms of legal costs and things that you have to pay you need to take into consideration that whatever you pay for that property so say it's 90,000 that you decide um, that you put an offer in for and it gets accepted you've got stamp duty land tax to pay on top of that which you can pay through the use of a solicitor. Also take into account that this stamp duty land tax is higher because it is a second home so if you pay more than 40,000 pounds on that property 
then you're eligible to pay stamp duty land tax. So if the house is worth under 125000 then you have to pay 3% of what you've paid on the property over to HMRC. If it's over 125000 but less than 250000 then you only have to pay 5%. Whereas if it's over 250000 but less than 925000 you have to pay 8%. Anything over 925000 to 1.5 million, you have to pay 13% stamp duty land tax. And anything over 1.5 million, you have to pay 15%. So it's worth taking this into account. So when you're trying to calculate what your income's going to be, less your costs, try and work out in advance if it's going to be worth you going for that property. Again here, if you're not 100% sure, you can take legal advice through the use of, again, a solicitor or an accountant to find out if that is going to be worth your time or not. The next thing you need to work out if you've decided, you know, you've done all your calculations, you're ready to go, you've got your deposit there, is whether or not you want a fixed rate mortgage or a variable mortgage. So a fixed rate mortgage guarantees that your payments remain the same during the fixed term, even if interest rates rise. However, the initial rate tends to be higher than those of a variable mortgage. So that's something to take into account. Now, if you don't want to worry about it and you don't want to think, oh Christ, are they going to go up or down, then get a fixed rate. Otherwise, you know, if you're a bit of a risk taker or you happy to take the risk in any circumstance go for a variable rate mortgage because you may have a lower initial interest rate but that can move up and down depending on the lender and the change to the Bank of England base rate so you might see your mortgage payments go up and down over time. Next you need to decide if you're going for an interest only repayment or both so there's three different types there of interest that you can pay. With an interest only mortgage you only pay the mortgage interest every month so it means at the end of the mortgage term you still owe the amount that you initially borrowed and you'll still be charged interest on the full balance of the mortgage each month until it's repaid. Now some buy to let investors choose that option because there are lower monthly payments to make and it's easier to meet the rental income criteria for buy to let mortgages but there are extra conditions for interest only deals so many plan to sell the property at the end of the mortgage term to cover the mortgage balance but there is a risk in that if the housing market changes and your property decreases in value then you could face a loss and you'll still need to pay back the original amount that you borrowed so for that reason most lenders will ask you to explain how you intend to pay back the amount that you borrowed when the mortgage ends. Now with a repayment mortgage your monthly payments will be higher because you'll be paying both the interest and the part of the amount that you borrowed but at the end of the mortgage term your debt will be fully repaid. So you've got to work out at that point what do you want right now? Do you want cash in, in your hand? So is it better for you to have a higher amount of yield in the year i.e. whatever your income is less your costs which are going to be lower with an interest only so do you want that money now or do you want to pay off the mortgage and reap the rewards a little bit later on? So you've just got to work out what you want to do and what your circumstances are but it's definitely definitely worth calculating this in advance and looking into that. Now when you actually go to the bank they will not advise you on the types of mortgage that are available to a buy to let investor. They're not allowed to do that so they will give you a list of options and it's up to you to make that decision so they can't sway you in any way. They will literally just give you a list out and it'll be like this is your fixed rate, this is how much you'll pay etc. Do you want it over five years, ten years, twenty years and you've got to work that out so it's definitely worth doing your homework way before you even get into that. So once you've made your appointment with the mortgage lender, make sure that you've got three months worth of bank statements ready to give them because they will need that for their credit checks. You also want to make sure that your credit score is as high as it possibly can be. So if you're looking to make any kind of mortgage application in the next, you know, three months, don't apply for any credit cards or loans in the meantime because that will affect your credit score because that will create hard searches on your account. So you want to make sure you're not doing that at least three months before you make Make the mortgage appointment. Next, you need to have a look at where you're going to get your mortgage from. So is it going to be with a bank? Is it going to be with a building society, etc.? Because every single one of those has got a different criteria in terms of your income. So you want to check that. And I know a lot of them say you need to be making at least 25000 a year before you can even apply. So that's something to take into consideration. Another thing which a lot of people aren't even aware of is you need to be obviously above the age of 18 to apply for a buy to let mortgage. But they actually have upper age limits too. So if you are 50 years of age when you go for a buy-to-let mortgage and you want a 20-year buy-to-let mortgage with the bank, then you're going to be 70 by the time that that's paid off. Now, they have an upper cap limit, so you can't be between the ages of 70 and 75 when the mortgage ends. So they won't actually allow you to have that particular buy-to-let mortgage. So you might have to reduce that to a 15-year buy-to-let mortgage or a 10-year buy-to-let mortgage. So that is something to be very, very aware of. So once you've digested all of that, what you then need to do is it's entirely up to you 
of course but you can use an estate agent to manage the property so if you do that they will in most cases charge you between 9 to 12 percent management fee every single month and they will get a tenant in for you they will create the contract they will be the point of contact for any repairs costs or issues and they will relay that back to you so they'll actually chase the debt as well so they will pass that income over to you and send you an invoice which includes their management fees on there and some additional costs that you might not be aware of are things like you've got to get a gas bill certificate you've got to get an energy certificate you've got there's all kinds of bits that i can go into on another video for you um which would be the step two once you've got the actual property itself so i can do that certainly but i hope you found all of this useful and um, please do leave a comment below if you've experienced any of this or you've got any feedback or advice for anybody else and it'd be lovely to hear from you but otherwise i'll see you on the next video